Well, as you can probably hear in the background, we're out here at the big hole, getting a little work done. Got Nate over there with me, clearing out some stuff. We cleared out a bunch. We got a bunch more to go. So I'll keep you updated as we go. It's hard work today, but it's, that's what you got to do for ducks, right? What's going on? So I didn't get much footage yesterday when Nate and I were out here today, but I brought a Tom with me today. And as I've told you before, having a Tom in the tool chest is a pretty handy thing to have. But um, we've really opened the big hole up. I bet we've increased it by about a third or so. We took out a bunch of buck brush behind us. Where I'm standing is about where the edge of the hole was now. And I've probably got 30 feet more wider all the way down the side here. And then we're getting ready to take out a couple of trees and the brush right back there, which will open up several hundred more square feet. The idea is just to get a bigger area here for the ducks to see as they fly over. I saw lots of mallards fly over this spot last year. Nobody gave us a look. So we just want to get a little bit bigger hole of water. And it's raining today. We brought Roundup, but it's raining. So I'm going to come out first thing in the morning and spray this with Roundup to kill this stuff. I was hesitant because there is quite a bit of smartweed, but two things. I think it's too late for smartweed to make seed by the time the season starts because normally that wants to start growing in like March. Uh, and there's also a bunch of other garbage in here that I don't want. This grassy stuff over here by, um, by Rosie is, I don't know what that is. I don't want it. This reedy stuff here that doesn't help and some remnants of buck brush that this 41% glyphosate should take care of. So that's the plan for today. We're out here in the rain off and on, open it up some more. So if I do anything interesting, anything else interesting, I will let you know. All right, well, day three out here in the big hole. You know, Nate and I came the first day, Tom and I came yesterday and in the rain, cut up a bunch. Our plan was to get back in here behind me where you can see a little maple tree growing, a bunch of other scrub, clear that area out, but it's just too mucky back in there. We couldn't really walk around. So instead, we just kind of expanded the big hole a little bit. Um, and we were going to round up in here yesterday, but you can't do that in the rain, right? It kind of defeats the purpose. So it's not supposed to rain for three or four days. Sun is finally starting to pop out this morning, which is good because this stuff works better when it's sunny. Plant's more active. Um, but uh, let me give you a little panorama here of the big hole. So that's to the back. That's where Tom and I sat early season. There was a big wall of buck brush there that Nate muscled out and did a fantastic job still got a little bit here and there but that's what the roundup i'm hoping is going to kill we probably pushed this back this stump right here in front of me is where we had stuff piled up that we cut last year so all the way back to that tree which is gosh 30 or 40 feet all of this is open so we have probably widened this hole by 25 to 30 percent i think i said that yesterday took a little bit out over there and pushed it down. I cut that corner. You really couldn't see across that corner at all. And I cut that down uh, as well. Again, the plan here, opening it up, trying to give ducks a bigger target to hit. And uh, you know, we're taking the buck brush out. I know some folks say, be careful, wood ducks like that stuff, but don't confuse it with button brush. Button brush makes a little ball, a seed, a, a bloom, whatever, that is food that ducks will eat. Buck brush does not. It's pretty noxious and while it will provide some cover it doesn't provide any food so we're trying to cut it all out of here either um, mechanically or chemically right so we've done a huge job over the last couple years here roundupping uh, i am using the generic stuff you can get from we get it from tractor supply the glyphosate i think it's 41.8 percent which is about double the roundup you can buy at home depot or lowe's right so it's a higher concentration uh two ounces per gallon as you can see i'm using this backpack sprayer 
uh, and just walking through here. I think that's going to be enough to clear this whole hole. Yeah, it feels like it seems like about still about half full. I've got another two gallons of water that I can use over there in a in a hand pump sprayer. But we are getting after it. Um, there is a lot of smart weed in here and I'm nuking most of it and I know that's blasphemy to some um, but a couple of things one the water didn't come off here soon enough I don't think to really give this uh, smart weed a chance to grow um, water came off here March last year like early March I think last year uh, and it still looked like it needed more time it didn't come off till mid April oh gosh maybe into May this year actually um, just uh, with flooding and rain and beavers, I just couldn't get it drained. Um, so I don't think it's going to have time to really do what it needs to do. It's slow growing. I've been watching over the last two weeks, and it is very, very slow growing. And then kind of a third factor is um, I don't know that it's the right variety that we really want. Yes, it did make seeds, but not nearly like what I have seen in some pictures and other information about that good Pennsylvania smartweed. I know there are multiple varieties. There's even one that's, there's a perennial and an annual. And the perennial continues to grow. It doesn't reseed every year. And consequently, it doesn't have to produce as much seeds and it's not a very good duck food. And I think some of that in here is that stuff, which doesn't really help me. Um, but uh, I'm taking it all out. I got all this green grassy stuff that's going away. I don't know what it is, but it doesn't look like a millet. So she is going bye-bye. And uh, hopefully this, uh, this heavy-duty glyphosate will knock out the rest of this buck brush. That's why I left this stand right here. We're going to see how... Excuse me, i got to scratch. We're going to see how glyphosate does on this stuff. Um, and uh, you can see some browning. That's where I used the Home Depot variety, which, like I said, is half the concentration. But I also threw in Scott's Weed Begun Max, which I use on the yard to good effect. That has 2,4-D, which I know Buckbrush does not like, um, as well as um, Dicamba, I think. You know, kind of all the stuff you use in your yard. It kills crabgrass and all that jazz. Uh, so I threw that out here. It's, what you don't want to do is anything that's like extended control, which this stuff didn't claim to be. You don't want extended control. You don't want anything that says prevents weeds for up to a year because that's going to put something in the soil that's going to prevent your seed from germinating. Rice is what I'm getting ready to throw in here in, a, in another week or two. So keep that in mind. Round up the glyphosate, uh, but like extended grass control, pretty much anything that has the word extended control in it, words extended control, is probably not what you want because that's going to have some type of a pre-emergent herbicide that's going to prevent new stuff from growing. So avoid that if you can. Um, I think this sprayer is going to get me done. I hope I've gone all the way down from back in the corner there. I got that whole side through there, nuked that stuff out all the way back around behind that tree. I stopped at that tree. I'm going to just let that grow wild. It's a nice little place. No, wood ducks will land back there, leave it nice and wild for them. And then I've gotten about this far from those clumps that you can see right down there. Not across. There's a ditch just past those first clumps. I didn't go over there, but I may if I've got enough juice left. Um, but that's where we are today. Also, too, I'm not taking out everything. The back hole is where we shot most of the ducks last year, and we're just not even touching it. We're leaving it alone. You know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So we're leaving that alone. We're going to see what happens. We're going to put a big stand of rice in here and see if the ducks come to it. Um, but for the moment, we're leaving it alone, so... It's about a, maybe a 70-30, 60-40 split with this being the bigger side and that being the untouched wild side. I probably will throw some rice and, and millet back in there just kind of as water comes down, but we're not doing any clearing. So that's the status right now on the big hole. It is, I think it's April, no, June, golly, <laughs> June 7th or 8th right now. Um, so... I'm back at it, hopefully in about a week or so. This stuff really needs two weeks. I'll keep an eye on it. I'd like to get the rice in here within the next seven to ten days, just so it has plenty of time. But that's where we are right now, so press it on. Let's keep moving. Hey, guys. Real quick, while I'm out here uh, spreading Roundup today and, and sharing some more content with you, do me a very, very big favor and hit the subscribe button. I've 
got just barely over 400 subscribers now, which is tiny. And I'm trying to get that magic thousand, 1,000 subscribers number, right? That's kind of, when, you, when you're trying to build a YouTube channel, that's where things kind of start to get interesting. I can monetize it at that point if I so choose to do. Not that I'm going to make millions of dollars, but, you know, it's kind of a goal that I've got. I've been doing this less than a year, so I'm, I'm not doing too bad. But I look at some of the analytics that YouTube shares with me, and it shows somewhere between 50% and 80-something percent of you guys are watching and you haven't subscribed. So it just takes a second to click that button uh, and click as a subscriber. You can hit the notification and, and be updated when I provide new content. I do hope, hope to have more hunting content here. I think I'm going to, I'm taking at least one trip, if not two, out to the coast this year, maybe even three if we draw a blind. Uh, and I want to share that with you guys as well as the rest of the work I'm doing out here. So please do me a favor, reach down there right now and hit the subscribe button because it will help me out a ton. All right, so I got done spraying. I thought I'd pop the drone up and let's take a look at what it looks like from just above treetop high um, and compare that maybe I'll try to maybe do a comparison of the drone footage I took last year uh, and you can see how much bigger this hole is than it was before how much larger it appears from the sky less buck brush and things like that so I'm hoping that does a couple of things like I've said before gives the ducks a bigger target I'm trying to attract these mallards that I saw flying over all season last year um, as well as uh, give me more more ground to put rice on, right? So more, more groceries there. Um, so that's the big bird's eye view um, of that. And then I also kind of came through and took a lower view. I came down below the trees, maybe about halfway up, and just kind of slowly went over so you can see what I'm working with. I still got some clumps here and there, a few tree stumps that until I can get a grinder in, those big tree stumps are staying because I'd rather see them than not see them underwater and trip over them. Uh, but then you can kind of see where I'm standing over here to the side and get a reference of how big it is. And I'm not even at the widest spot, right? So it's, this, is a, this is a good sized duck hole. Towards the end here, you can see the area that I did, have not yet gotten to. Probably not gonna plant rice in there this year. I'm probably gonna wait a little bit longer, let it dry out, cause it's hard to walk in and clear it out and then probably throw some millet back in there, um, which doesn't need as long to grow. So looking really good, looking really, really good. Pretty happy with everything we got going on out here. Uh, just gotta, just gotta keep at it. Feel I'm a little behind schedule. I'm a week or two behind schedule. I would really love to already have my rice in the ground right now, but that's not happening. So um, we're gonna get to it. I think I've got a couple more weeks, uh, and I'm still safe. So I think that's it for the big hole update. Um, that's it for now. So um, you know. Keep it following along. We'll have rice in the ground soon and, and uh, ducks this fall. Ducks and rice, right? It's a great combination to hunt and to eat. <laughs> so anyway, thanks for watching. As always, this is Bruce, and you've been watching Foul Play Outdoors. Thanks a lot.